Let's go around the country with the latest recruiting intel. We'll hear from national recruiting analysts Tom Loy, Brandon Huffman, and Brian Doan. Here's Tom to start off our recruiting roundup. Thanks, Emily. After a long couple of days in Tampa, Florida at the OT7 Championships, I've got two prospects I want to discuss. The first is Homestead, Florida, top 247 four-star receiver Cortez Mills. He's currently looking at Miami, Nebraska, Florida, and Clemson. My 24-7 sports crystal ball has been on the Miami Hurricanes for a very long time. That staff has been doing a phenomenal job recruiting him, making him feel like priority number one, and giving him all of the right reasons to stay home. However, after this weekend, getting around Mills and talking to some sources, my crystal ball is being flipped to the Clemson Tigers. I feel great about Dabo Sweeney and his staff getting this one done. We'll see if anything changes, but I like the Tigers. I feel confident that he's going to land in Death Valley come decision time later this summer. The other one I want to talk about is Alabaster, Alabama, Thompson, top 100 four-star safety, and Quan Fegans. He's looking at Auburn, Clemson, Georgia, and LSU. He's got a commitment date set for July 29th. We'll see if he decides to move it up. But my 24-7 sports crystal ball is on the Auburn Tigers. Christian Clemente over at Auburn Undercover does, does a phenomenal job. He joined me on the crystal ball. We feel good about the Tigers. I see a Tiger theme here with this one. And I like Fegan's to land at Auburn. Side note, pretty confident I saw him walking through the airport in Tampa, rocking some Auburn Tigers gear. Like I said, feel good about them landing there. Now let's send it over to Brandon Huffman out west to find out the latest rumblings over in his neck of the woods. Thanks, Tom. One of the biggest news out west this last week was the top six that was named by Carmel offensive lineman Jackson Lloyd. He's the number three player in Northern California in the 2025 class, the number one offensive lineman in the northern part of the state. But he named a top six on Thursday of Alabama, Ohio State, USC, Stanford, Oregon, and Tennessee. Now, Lloyd has set three official visits for the month of June. He just took his first official visit this past weekend to Ohio State. The Buckeyes are very much a factor there. Chip Kelly was the first coach that offered him back when he was the head coach at UCLA. They made it a point to offer him when he got to Columbus with Justin Fry, the offensive line coach, going to Carmel to offer Lloyd. And the Buckeyes set a high bar after hosting him this past weekend for an official visit. Now, he still has subsequent visits to Alabama and USC scheduled for the next two weekends. But the Buckeyes, who weren't even on the radar with an offer a month ago, now find themselves in the top six. But realistically, they're in that top three. The other top recruit out west in the Pacific Northwest, he's the top recruit in the state of Washington, is Zadrius Rainey Saleh. The number one player in Washington, he's already been invited to the Polynesian Bowl, the All-American Bowl, and the Under Armour All-American Game, committed to Washington the afternoon of the national championship game. Four days later, Kalen DeBoer left Washington for Alabama, so he decommitted. He's at various points named a top six after he decommitted from Washington, but realistically, this is turning into a three-team race with UCLA, Florida State, and Washington, really the three schools factoring in for him. He wants to make his decision in July. He took this weekend off from visits after taking a visit to Oregon State the first weekend in June. Now he's got visits to Florida State this weekend and to Washington to close it out. Now the Huskies do have the hometown advantage, but he nearly committed to Florida State at the All-American Bowl before he pushed that announcement back and then announced from the, the Huskies on that Monday. But UCLA is slowly but surely climbing into the mix for him and it's presented a very optimal op opportunity for Rainey Saleh with the Kaika Malloy, who had re recruited him as a freshman when he was still at Washington. The Bruins are a factor, but you cannot sleep on the Seminoles, who nearly got him back in January, or the hometown Huskies. Now, we throw it to Brian Doan for some East Coast recruiting intel. Thanks, Huff. In the East, we're going to look at two four-star prospects. First, we're going to start off with receiver Jeff Exenor out of the McDonough School in Maryland. Coming off of a Penn State official visit, he named the Nittany Lions his leader. He also made an official visit to Virginia Tech. He told me he does not plan on deciding until he makes an official visit to Maryland. After that, it should be a pretty quick decision. Penn State is always a tough one to beat for kids from McDonough, especially the high-end kids. In talking to some folks on Monday morning, I think that continues to be the case for Exenor. 
Another kid that the Nittany Lions are heavily involved with is Jameer Joseph, a quarterback out of St. Joseph Regional in North Jersey. He made official visits to Stanford and Notre Dame. He will be at Penn State this coming weekend. He also has a trip to South Carolina set for June 21st. Everybody I talk to says Penn State is still the school to beat. They were the school to beat in the fall, the school to beat in the early spring when I was up on the St. Joseph campus. And as we sit here now, I still like where Penn State sits. It does not matter how many commits they get at the cornerback spot in the next few days. I'm told that he will still be a take because he is a priority kid. Thanks, guys. For more unrivaled recruiting intel, head to 247sports.com. We are running a 60% off promo on all annual VIP memberships. That deal runs through tomorrow night at midnight, so jump on that soon. <laughs>